So welcome everyone. I know this is the last session of Tuesday. Thanks for everyone for coming out. Hope everyone's having a good show. I guess the HP party didn't steal everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for staying. So we're going to talk about navigating the OpenStack ecosystem. Uh, so you guys can sort of get a feel for for how the ecosystem works. We're not going to cover everything. It's a big ecosystem and it's growing every day. So we'll just give you a feel for where we see it is today and how to find out more information about it as, as it grows over time. So a little bit about, about us. I'll introduce myself and then Sri Ram the Cloud Don will introduce himself. Wanted to make sure you guys had a recent picture, right? So it's something from something from Saturday when I got here. But I'm currently the uh, VP of Operations for Selenia, or a professional services and product company focused in OpenStack. Uh, before Selenia, I was at Cloud Scaling, working in the product management group, and been in the OpenStack, involved with OpenStack since about 2010-2011. Sri Ram, thanks, Seth. Um, I'm Sri Ram Subramanian, alias Cloud Don. I'm a founder of a cloud consulting firm called Cloud Don, uh, where we offer analysis, content, and training services, focusing on OpenStack. I've been part of the OpenStack community since uh, Cactus days. Uh, I've been like playing different roles, operators, developer, architect, and uh, these days I focus more on high-level strategy and analysis. I'm also an HP Elion MVP, and uh, personally, like I'm a, I'm a strong OpenStack enthusiast and evangelist. I love evangelizing OpenStack. He got one of the blue hoodies with his name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. And by the way, this talk is for someone or anyone who could think that uh, with the big cloud consolidation, ecosystem is dead, it is not. Open OpenStack ecosystem is like live, thriving, and kicking in, so you, you learn more. So I promise only one gratuitous marketing slide. These are the people that paid for me to get here, so I gotta tell you a little bit about, about who Selenia is. Uh, Purpose Built for Cloud, we help companies kind of across the board for everything from cloud strategy to cloud deployments. Uh, our team has been involved with OpenStack basically since the inception. We've got a proven delivery model, We've got some differentiating IP. I encourage you to stop by the booth. I can tell you more about Goldstone, our product for managing OpenStack clouds. And we have a lot of experience in enterprise IT, and we know how enterprises adopt technology, and we can help you guys that way as well. So with that, let's get started. So we want to talk about growth of OpenStack. If you look, you know, kind of a stack bar going back to Austin and Bear, right? <laughs> you can see the growth. It's exponential. This doesn't include uh, this. It doesn't include this summit, but you know when when you, uh, I've got some numbers here, right? I think we've probably seen them. Over 17,000 people, 400 different companies in the in this cycle, 145 countries, and 20 million lines of code. So there's a lot of growth. So there clearly is a lot lot of stuff going on. And you know what we're going to talk about today is not you know OpenStack as a core technology is great, but you can't do technology one piece of technology alone. The history of the IT industry has has shown that to us, and OpenStack is a great example of that. So um, this is, uh, we're kind of going to switch back and forth, and I'm personally passionate, right? So uh, we are seeing a lot of enterprise adoption these days, and we have had the first official numbers, our first um, projected numbers, right? So uh, a 451 Research, OpenStack Pulse 2014, open 451 Research projects or plugs the OpenStack revenue to be more than $3 billion by 2018. And if you look at the number of deployments uh, tracking by the OpenStack user surveys, right, in the period of next three years, it's going to be more than 20,000 OpenStack deployments globally of different sizes. What it shows is that, that it is happening, it is real, and you are seeing a lot of adoption. And uh, the other thing, like when you, when you navigate or when you look into OpenStack, right, like what, what are you trying to do here? So if you want to highlight typical application deployment process, right? You might have your, your, your wipe application running, your enterprise application running, or anything running. What is happening there, and how is the infrastructure affecting that, right? Oftentimes, and very, very rarely, the application is like any longer monolithic or single node, right? It tends to be complex, tends to be multi-node, tends to be distributed. Take the VOP example, the wipe example. I chose to put a really bad picture of this because like, this is how people were doing it before. The, the clouds that you see here are not, not the cloud that we are talking about, just the blob representation of internet and uh, PSTN. P a, voice, a simple VoIP, uh, VoIP application involves multiple services, right? Like translation service, mediation service. Um, it, it needs multiple technologies, right? Digital analog. And it, it is deployed over multiple uh, networks, PSTN, PBX, uh, your cell phone network, so all these things are showing that it's very complex, right? Any application tends to be complex. And the underlying infrastructure also will be complex. And how you can, so you are going to need a lot of components to be deployed. That's where the ecosystem come in, that comes in. That's where like, you have a lot of things to pick and choose from, the providers. And that's why like, when you're, you need help in navigating the ecosystem. 
So I think we've all seen this diagram, right? So I won't dwell on it too long, but it didn't <laughs> blow up as well as I hoped. <laughs> um, the, you know, it, it OpenStack in and of itself is complicated, right? It, there's a lot of pieces, a lot of moving parts, and it grows, right? The project is expanding, new, new projects get incubated and involved in, involved in, the, in the process. So it's growing over time. So, you know, just like the attendance, so, so is sort of the, the technology itself. So, you know, what does the ecosystem look like? I'm going to sort of talk through the different areas. You know, OpenStack really started in the service providers and distributions, right? You've got companies like Rackspace and Enovance. There's specialty players out there that work in different countries, right? Basically, they'll, they'll service you where you are. Um, and there's some general purpose clouds out there that you can work with, as well as some specialty clouds. Maybe they have a PaaS offering that you want to layer on top of it. So there's a lot of choices just in the service provider space alone. You know, Keo Networks is, 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 in, uh, is in Mexico, right? And you've got HP building a cloud all over, right? So there's a lot of different choices there. When you get into the distributions, you know, everyone sort of has their, th their preferences. Everyone from Cloud Scaling to Piston, who are kind of in this from the beginning, Mirantis as well, um, Nebula. Oracle is now coming into the, into the game. HP, I, I'm sure you've all heard Helion. I see all the jackets, so everyone knows all about Helion, right? So, you know, HP offers that end-to-end -end solution. Oracle has that as well, where you can get the hardware and the software from a single vendor. So a lot of different choices, even in the distribution space. And they're sort of more mature in this space, so I'm not going to spend as much time on those. When you get into the x86 vendors, you know, you see there's overlap, obviously. HP lives in multiple boxes, you know, so th they're actually playing well in, in a lot of different areas. Um, Dell has been done a great job of participating in the community and being involved. And then you've got the white label solutions, companies like Quanta and Supermicro that are out there, you know, helping companies do, do cloud computing as well and giving you an alternate to some of the vendors if that's what you're looking for. And then there's the private, cl private cloud as a service. MetaCloud and BlueBox offer on-premise per VM pricing. MetaCloud is now part of Cisco, so you'll see as part of this community, there's a lot of startups, and Sriram's going to talk about those, but there's also acquisitions going around. So there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of, a lot of places to follow along with there. So as we go through, we get into stuff like block storage. So companies like Ceph, Ink Tank was recently acquired by Red Hat, so that becomes part of their HP has storage. The OpenStack Foundation the, the, and the technology teams have been great about building uh, plugins, right, for, for storage and, and networking in particular where you can take a lot of different pieces from your existing enterprise, or if you're building something brand new, have a lot of choices from the, from the ecosystem to choose to, that will be integrated. And I'll show you some stuff where you can find resources on, on the OpenStack.org website on how to find more about, about these different plugins, right? So EMC, NetApp, I'm sure they're in just about everyone's data center here, right? So th there's a lot of different choices there. When you get into object storage, um, some of these are combined, right? You know, Ceph and Nexenta are living in both places. Nexenta uh, just released Nexenta Edge. So it's a new technology from then. It's, it's combined object and block storage that allows you to work very similarly to Ceph, you know, based on their technology. And SwiftStack just received some, uh, uh, another round of investment. So again, what was that? Huge round of investment. A huge $16 million, I think it was, right? So they're, you know, they're propelling themselves forward with a great you know, standalone Swift solution if you're looking for something like that, and it, it integrates well with the rest of the environment as well. So then you get into cloud management, and this is where, you know, if you're looking at a hybrid solution, you know, Clicker and Scalar are great fits for things like that. You know, if, you're, if you're familiar with the Amazon Web Services, you know, you've pr maybe seen RightScale and Instratus, right, or Instratius now, excuse me, and those guys are out there doing stuff in the public cloud, but if you're going to build yourself a hybrid cloud with OpenStack on one side, um, a lot of these guys actually even work with cloud.com or cloudstack if you've got that. And Amazon, these guys sit as an abstraction layer between those two environments that you can build out and, sh and shield yourself from the API. You can make one API call, for example, to Scalar or Clicker, and they will actually distribute that out to Amazon or OpenStack based on the rules that you've set up for your organization, if that's based on time of day, pricing, you know the public cloud is going to be cheaper for this time of day, or you want to make sure that this workload only goes onto your private cloud, Clicker and Scalar can handle that. Uh, Goldstone I talked about a little bit. It's really meant where Clicker and Scalar are focused on the virtual machines and the applications. Uh, the Goldstone product is really meant to manage the OpenStack platform itself, managing the compute nodes, make sure your hypervisors are healthy. So there's tools out there in the marketplace that you can put together to make a complete solution for the enterprise not, and not just rely on OpenStack itself. So we get into sort of the next layer, a company called Virtual Bridges. Um, they have a, a virtual desktop solution. So, you know, a lot of people are running that today. 
It's designed to manage your golden images and manage, uh, manage all of your licensing on top of OpenStack. So now you've got a way to use OpenStack to handle that uh, component of your, uh, of your IT. Um, VMHA, Stratus, you know, they're a company that's been around a while. They've been around 30 years. They're taking their you know, always-on servers and moving that into the OpenStack environment. So now you can have high availability for VMs. They're kind of like, I'm not a fan of this analogy, but I haven't found a, a better one yet, pets <laughs> and cattle, right? Um, <laughs> until we find a better one, I'll, I guess I'll stick with it. But the, these are really for your pets. You can take your pets and push them into OpenStack with, with, with this type of solution. Uh, Paz actually spoke earlier today about Paz and building that on, a, on, uh, on top of OpenStack, but there's a lot of choices. Uh, Red Hat has OpenShift, which has their cartridge model and their pieces. Cloud Foundry, there's a bunch of companies in that space. You've got Staccato, you've got Pivotal, uh, IBM, Bluemix is coming up in there. There's a lot of different choices, even just for Paz, to run on top of OpenStack. Um, when we get into SDN, now this is where there's uh, been a ton of investment lately in the community on this. Open Daylight, uh, fully open source solution. There's a, there's a wide range here. Mitocora just open sourced their tools uh, as of, I think, yesterday. Uh, Plum Grid has a solution as well. So getting that visibility into your network. You know, these tools don't necessarily just work on OpenStack. They'll work across your enterprise networks as well. Um, Juniper's got a Contrail solution. So you're seeing you know, everything from pure open source solutions to venture-backed companies to companies like Juniper that are out there participating here, Cisco as well, and Cplane Networks. There's a lot of different ways to, to make SDN work for your environment, and, de and depending on your networking requirements, there's a solution out there for you, for sure. So, you know, when you talk about ways to consume, right, you know, you can do it yourself, right? I know a lot of companies that have done that and succeeded. Some of them haven't succeeded so well doing that either, but that's really a capital expense. You're going to go out, you're going to procure servers, you're going to install the software and, and, and sort of go on your own. Th th then there's the standard pay-as-you-go, which is the public service provider. And then you've got pay-as-you-go on-site, which is an option that we've seen a lot of companies that are interested in. And I think that's why MetaCloud was so interesting to, to Cisco, right, is that you can, you can basically have this fully managed infrastructure on your premise and pay for VMs. And, and they all obviously come with maintenance and support. So the idea here is there's not, there's not one way to procure OpenStack and go about it, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can really make OpenStack work, and depending on your business needs, you can choose the right the right model for you. Uh, I want to talk about the startup ecosystem, OpenStack startup ecosystem now, right? So as I mentioned before, uh, the ecosystem is thriving as ever, and uh, this is a great time to OpenStack is a great place to start your uh, business, start your idea, right? So uh, the first way of startups, the early startups in the op OpenStack ecosystem, uh, Piston Cloud, Nebula. The, these are all, they are all trying to solve the infrastructure problem. How do you make your installation easier? And now the great consolidation happened, but it's a good time for looking beyond your infrastructure, right? How do you make the automation much easier? Make your DevOps process easier? What kind of applications you can run on that? And how do you deploy these applications easier? So that's where these, these startups would come into picture, right? And um, also the distribution model itself, like some people think it's, it's broken or you can fix that. So some of the uh, distributions like uh, U United Stack, they have a cool UI, you give you a different experience. Uh, it's not just the dashboard that you have, uh, the Horizon dashboard that you have. So th th that's where the innovation is happening now. Uh, Apira is an Australia-based consulting uh, firm. They also have a private cloud distribution. On Onyx CCS, like I haven't even aware of them until like two days ago where I got the details from uh, the marketplace, OpenStack marketplace. Uh, by the way, it's a good place to check to know more about um, who's where and what is what, and Seth is going to walk through the marketplace. Um, I talked about the application layer, right? So you have companies like Cloud Merch and Stackstar, Stackstorm. They help you to uh, deploy your applications easier. Uh, worry less about the OpenStack infrastructure, but starting from your application code, how do you, how do, you do CI, CD, and how do you get your application up running on your OpenStack cloud? Those come, into, those, those come handy. You have uh, the new way of looking at the management layer. You have Stack Ops, C C3 DNA, Headera technology. Visual Ops uh, needs a special mention because they provide you with a drag and drop way to uh, deploy your cloud itself. Uh, you all your uh, resources, networks, com compute nodes, storage nodes, you get a nice UI for them. It's as if like you're using a visual uh, uh, UI for that. It's also a good time for like, uh, I'm seeing a lot of um, small, 
a lot of startups are doing a lot of innovation in the networking, uh, SDN space, Big Switch Network, New Arch Networks, uh, he talked about Miracora, Embrain. So uh, all, it, all it shows is that, that like, um, we have more than ever more number of startups participating and keep innovating in the OpenStack space. So, you know, this was kind of a, you know, th there's, a, there's a lot more than that, as you can see on the, on, the, on the show floor here. We couldn't sort of cover all the different companies out there. So how do you find out more and how do you learn about these companies? Uh, you know, people have come up to, come up to me <coughs> and my, and when I went on projects and I, they just don't know how to find information about, about where to find companies that are working in OpenStack. So the foundation has done a great job. Um, not just managing the technology project, but managing the, the, the business side of it. And the marketplace is a great example of it. You know, openstack.org slash marketplace, there's some major categories that, that, you know, the community has been building around, and that's where they're f they focused originally. So, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a great tool. So if we start, we're going to just look at training, right? That what you can find in the training section are uh, classes that are currently scheduled, right? What... You can't find in the training session are companies that will build you custom classes. That's a little bit different. But you know, if you're looking for classes that are scheduled around the world, you need looking for something in Paris, you're looking for something in Palo Alto, you can come to this website. And based on what you're looking for, you can, really, you can, you you can find what you're looking for there. And, and uh, there's a wide range of classes from you know, OpenStack 101 to architecting OpenStack solutions, some high-end classes out there as well. And Red Hat and Mirantis are also doing certifications. So if that's something that's important to some organizations, right, you can actually get your engineers uh, trained and then certified on OpenStack from, from those companies. So as we go out public clouds, this gets a little bit more you know, dynamic. You can actually look for something in your region, right? Maybe you're looking for something in Europe because that's where you are, or maybe you're looking for something that's uh, in another region intentionally so that you have a geographic distribution, right? You're based it here in Paris. You want something in the U.S. so you can get some geodiversity from your application. And you can drive through this. I'm not going to do all the clicks, obviously, but you guys can drive through this and, and find the solutions and, and the companies that are going to work based on where you are. You can also zoom through the region from the, from the UI. Right. So, uh, you know, you can see, for example, there's eight in the United States in the, in the south, in, in, in south central United States. And you, as you click through, it'll blow them up and you can see exactly what's going on there. So... Then you can get into systems integrators, right? If you're looking for somebody to help with this, you maybe, you, you, maybe you've picked a distro, maybe you haven't picked a distro yet, you're trying to pick a distro. The SI section is again regionalized, so based on where you are, you can find somebody close to you that will help you out and, and help everything from, you know, maybe you need a cloud strategy, maybe you're looking for a distro evaluation, maybe you need somebody to help with PaaS on OpenStack, and there's a profile for every for every uh, for every dist for every excuse me SI out there, and you can drive in and see what they offer. What do they know Nova? Do they know Swift? What are the components that they're familiar with, and how they can help you out and help out your business? So the other section is drivers, and I touched on this a little bit. The plugin model that's been designed for OpenStack has really generated a lot of flexibility, and to to that end, the there's a lot of testing that goes on. Companies can create a driver. Primarily, this is around today. It's around Cinder as well as Neutron, and that's growing into different projects, so you can actually, that, that plug-in architecture is, is, is proliferating. So people can make a storage driver and add it into OpenStack, you know, and get it certified. So you can come here, maybe you have technology in your data center, and you want to see if it will work with OpenStack. Come here, check it out, and you can find that. Or maybe you're looking to buy something new, and you want to make sure it works with OpenStack. So this is a great way to to validate that and make sure that you're, you're getting what you need from your, from your vendors, right? You can, and you can it, you know, I encourage you to ask them if they're, if they're part of this, if they're not already, right? And it'll sort of help drive the community forward in the whole project for sure. So you know, this is just two, two examples here, right? When we talk about, um, th these are two projects that actually I worked on personally, and you know, there was never one vendor in the mix, and there was never one technology in the mix. It's always a wide range of things that are being involved. If you go to openstack.org slash enterprise, you can get a lot more detail on this one. It was a, a, a white paper that the foundation put together, uh, big data on OpenStack. So Selenia was the, was the SI there. Uh, th this uh, company chose Red Hat as the distro, and they used uh, the Hadoop distribution. Hadoop is doing very similar things. A lot of distros available for Hadoop, same exact model, right? So they chose Cloudera for theirs. They actually had a mix of Quanta and HP hardware for their, for their x86 solution. They were primarily 
um, an HP shop, and they wanted to experiment with some white label stuff. So this is where they took the opportunity and looked at the Qantas solution from an x86 perspective. Uh, on the storage side, they were focused on NetApp and Nimble. They had NetApp in their data center. Nimble was offering them a price point for high performance storage that was going to work for them. So it was a, it's a pretty wide range of solution that you know, com included hardware, software, OpenStack, and services to really get up and running. Um, if you look at the paths on OpenStack, it's a little bit shorter of a list, but th that project was um, a little more straightforward, I'd say. So again, Selenium was the SI. The distro here, again, was Red Hat. Um, the PaaS was OpenShift. This company had a large relationship with Red Hat. And they chose uh, RHEL OSP for their distro, and they wanted to stick with Red Hat. They also had some technical choices to go with OpenShift that were more around uh, J2EE and some features in OpenShift that work better for them. Right? So m the nice thing is they had choices. Right? They were able to look into the community and find a choice. And all of their x86 hardware was Cisco. Right? So kind of a great fit across the board. A lot of different ways to, to a lot of different vendors involved here as well. So you know, th the point of this graphic is you don't have to be alone. Right? You're not sitting there on the stoop like wondering what's going on. Right? Reach out. There's a whole ecosystem out there. And you know, with that, what I want to do is we can throw it out for questions and see if people have any questions. If there's something you're looking for, maybe we can help you find. Please. You want to take that? Uh, yeah. So. Um, the marketplace itself has place for having reviews. It's just like Elk, but the thing is, like, it's not getting popular enough. So, uh, but it's a, it's a call for all you all. Right? If you use a consultant or a SAP integrator, you can go and give your reviews on them. So it's not highly popular yet, but there is a way to do that one. And and another thing is, like, community is very open. Uh, you can you you'll hear about someone doing good job or not so good job. Yeah. No, not on the side, but but. <laughs> There is a way to uh, eventually it'll get populated. You know, I, I also encourage to ask for references, right? That's you know pretty standard. Talk to their talk to their other customers, and you know sometimes you know you, sometimes you get the golden customer, right? You know you need to be sort of be careful with that. But you know people are like like sure I'm saying the community is open and people talk, right? So I if somebody's doing a bad job out there, I can tell you I've heard stories, so I'm sure you will too. Is there anything else you would like to give us a feedback in terms of, like I provided you that there is a way to review that, but do you have anything that we can convey to the foundation or you can convey to the foundation? Because it's a work in progress, right? Like there is an infrastructure here and there is a way to do some reviews, but again, like anything else that you want to add, please feel free to communicate directly or let us know, we can communicate. Yes. Yeah, the, the marketplace launched at the last summit, so last it's really summit. brand new yeah. and that's why the data is not there for the reviews, but it's coming. Any other questions? Usually there's three, at least three questions. <laughs> hey, it's obvious. <laughs> no. uh, everyone, uh, no, he's in, 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 it's funny, but he's actually right. Everyone knows VMware. This wasn't, this wasn't uh, a favorites contest. This was, what we were trying to do was highlight things people didn't necessarily know about. VMware is obviously a big part of the community. They, they have been for a long time and I'm sure we'll continue to be that way. So uh, this wasn't about trying to leave somebody out, but it was really about trying to highlight things that maybe people hadn't seen. And, and we tend to see something. Yeah, they, 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 they show up in, 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 in a lot of areas, though. No, yeah. That's fair, fair that's feedback. Right, yeah. And, and the, the, the startup slide is, was specifically meant for the startups to highlight them. So naturally, like VMware or Cisco will not be a good fit there. You would see like more than four or three or four network vendors or SDN plugin developers listed there. Just size is small, but just wanted to be highlighted there, that's all. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, there we are. You have a what? In the in the distro space the or other places? Actually, yeah, I'm mostly looking at like 
outside the distros. I think, you know, it's actually harder for the distro guys to stay up than the other guys because the other guys are relying on APIs. And those, I mean, they do change, obviously, but not nearly as dramatically as some of the underlying components, right? When we went from, um, you know, Essex to Folsom to, you, as we, we went through these latest releases, there were some pretty significant changes, right? We got to Havana, we could finally do upgrades, right? Um, that didn't impact people that were building stuff that were talking to the APIs, but it really hit the distro guys pretty hard. And having worked for one of those, that keeping up with Trunk is much harder for distros. Um, and as long as we we're, we're on that subject, one of the things that I've seen with a lot of a lot of customers, they they're, they seem to be worried about about OpenStack upgrades every six months. It's too fast, right? This is always changing. It's always how do I keep up? What I would encourage you, especially if you've chosen a distro, is follow their cycles. That's who you're getting support and maintenance from. That's who you're going to have to. That's who you're going to call when it breaks. You're not going to call the foundation. Lauren Sells is very nice, but she doesn't take those calls, right? Um, so you know, those are the people that are that, that are going to do that for you, and they'll handle the, even handle the upgrades for you as as you go through it. So it's tracking a distro release cycle is significantly more important than tracking an OpenStack release cycle. Having said that. The pressure is higher on the distro providers to keep to stay up to date or to stay current, right? So, so they try to do it as early as possible. And um, did you ask about the SDN providers or the smaller players having their code up to date, or is it more about customers? How are they keeping it up to date? Uh, just on that same addition, I know that we're we're using some live or some streaming stuff to keep up with that. Uh, but right. Uh, right. Uh, there is definitely an issue there, but like uh, most of the uh, like specific specialized providers, right? Like PickSwitch Networks, for instance, who provide just network plugin, or uh, Medacora, or our Swift Stack, right? They tend to stay up to date. They try to make it faster, and uh, we can track that actually by the code contribution they have, and it's it's just open. Stackletics is there. Even Foundation is tracking it there. Uh, we may not have it right away there, but there's a way to track that one. From what we have seen earlier, these specialized providers tend to stay current. The distribution is, is what it might take a little bit later, but even there, there's a pressure is on, right? And uh, he mentioned about the support. Most of the system integrators, you they have for some kind of support, so you can, um, depending on like how much uh, the pricing is, you can rely on that to get, even if there's a version upgrade, will they be able to support that? It's actually a good question to ask when you talk to a system integrator. Do you support? What do you support? And do you support upgrades? So something to uh, keep in mind. Any other questions? Kickstarter, okay, okay. It's, it, it's a good point, actually. Yeah. It, it's actually a good point. I would suggest, like, uh, there are lightning sessions happening, right? So why don't you throw that an idea, say, like, if you, if, I mean, if anybody could choose at once, but, but if you want to take it, like, here, take it. Let's try. Okay. It, it, it Kickstarter is an interesting way to, to, to fund businesses these days, right? Um, you know, it, it th there's been a few big ones, but they're mostly a little bit on the on the smaller side, right? But y you can certainly get a big a big project funded on, on there for sure. I have a call to action, but uh, wait. Is there any other questions before we? Yeah. Uh, it was there actually. I mean, uh, that's. Currently, the the marketplace lists both consultants and system integrators together. Maybe they'll get separated, but right now that's how the right. marketplace is. Yep. And uh, I mean, you like m one of my personal thing that's missing is that that um, the marketplace does not list the value added applications, right? So you only see the distributions or private cloud providers or the system integrators, uh, the consultants. But anybody who is developing applications on top of uh, OpenStack or anything that makes the application deployment easier. They are not listed yet, but eventually I we hope it will come in. And, and, and you'll see on companies' websites there's an OpenStack powered, OpenStack compatible, right? Those are different banners that you actually have to go through a process to, 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 to receive that. You can't just pull it off the website and throw it on yours. Um, you actually have to get a certification done to do that, right? So look for those as well when you're looking at companies and make sure that they, they have that compatibility that you need. Show up like you want to see that. What, what features they. You can go to the site and show it if you're interested. You want to go to the website? Yeah. Would that be useful? That'd be useful. Like we can show, like for now it lists like 
what are the APIs that are supported by a distribution provider or a service provider, right? And uh, what are the features they offer? Do they offer just storage? Do they offer compute? Like the marketplace try to list those things. You can drill down the details of any specific service provider that you're looking at. And uh, apart from that, like you also have the certification banners or logos, right? Compatible or certified. That will give you some kind of a guarantee on what quality they are at. So which one do you want to bring up? Probably clouds for this one. So you can sort of drive through. Um, you know, maybe you're looking for something in North America, right? Click down. Let's go with Canada. Let's go with Canada. They loaded first. <laughs> oh, French and Canada. Right. Let us. So, uh, you know, Vex Vexhost, host. and we yeah. can drive into Vexhost and learn more about them, right, and see what they do. Yeah. And and the li version is listed, right? Like they are still in Havana version. This particular provider, and uh, what kind of billing pricing options, right? Hourly, monthly, long term. Apparently, they have contract too. So, yeah. And this is where, like, you are. You can read reviews. Uh, excuse me. You were asking about the reviews, right? Apparently, it's not populated, but there's a way to write a review and s start them. You can do that. Yeah. Great. Anyone else? So finally, like uh, if you have any, if you have used anybody, please go and populate these reviews. That's going to help the community. And uh, if you are one of the service providers, a consultant, or an SI, or any provider, and if you are not listed here, please initiate the process so that you get more visibility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.